morning. Nobody's joining me just yet, but uh, since when have I let that bother me? And I've done it again, folks. A paintbrush that I left from last week. So, while we're waiting for people to join us, just see if it's two minutes to see if anybody's about. Today, I've, I'm, I've got a canvas board because I've run out of the um, normal canvases. And I just thought, I've been doing a, um, a commission and it's all been in black and white. It's been quite a challenge because you're getting all the sky and everything um, in all the different depths and the shadows and everything, just using the black and the white. So I thought I would do today a black and white painting. Oh, we've got a few people. Sharon, Gemma. <laughs> Sharon, happy birthday. Thank you. Happy birthday, yes. Today is my birthday. Um, and I'm sharing it with you guys. How nice is that? <laughs> so yeah, I thought I would do a landscape that's in black and white. And then I would like to add some flowers and just make parts of the flowers just pop so that everything's in black and white but the flowers themselves will be in colour. So that's the idea. Hi Alicia. So I thought, so that's my idea, so we'll see how we go. You know what I'm like, we just, um, we grab our brushes, we grab our paints and off we go. Okay, for the flowers I have got a purple um, I've also got alizarin crimson, a lemon yellow and my bright red and obviously leftover white from my commission. I've got black, which is um, the Bob Ross black, I've got, which is there, which is like a midnight black. It's got a slight reddish tinge to it. I've also got a lamp black, which is Windsor and Newton, and that is completely black. Happy birthday. Thank you. And uh, then I've got also got a Payne's Grey, which is very, very dark in oil colours, but it's excellent just for shadows so that you don't always use just black and white, if that makes sense. OK, so without any further ado, let's do a little bit of the Payne's Grey and we'll mix some black into it, the lamp black. In fact, let's do a little mixture of all three, shall we? We'll see what happens. OK. Now, because I've just got the canvas board instead of the canvas, a proper canvas. Hi, Kirsty. Um, I've got these little bits that hold the canvas in place. It's a little bit annoying, but we'll work around those and I can always fill in those afterwards. So we'll start with a little bit of sky. I do want my corners to be dark, so I will just add black in there. Okay, there we go. And we'll bring it down. I thought maybe we'll put, maybe you have some mountains or perhaps just a little bit hillside. We'll see. We'll see what happens as we go. You know what I'm like. I make it up as I go along and then change my mind halfway through. It's really only when I do commissions that I know totally what I'm doing. But that's what's great about this particular method of painting. You can change your mind as you go. So, we'll do a nice big sky. I will add some dark clouds and some light fluffy white ones and we'll get some atmosphere going. Who else is here? Pete Davis. Hi, to someone the joys and laughter. Oh, bless your heart, thank you. <laughs> and you too, and you too. He's a wonderful young man. Okay, there we go. So, that's basically all I'm going to do for the sky there. I'm going to do a little bit the same way. Who knows, we might have some water in the bottom, we might not. But either way, let's just put it all in and let's fill the canvas up. Okay, so <clears throat> perhaps bring that in a little bit higher, who knows. Come out to the side, let's just blend that in. The canvas board first was covered with liquid white. I did think about using the liquid clear because that doesn't dilute the colours, but then I thought, nah, black is too, 
too much to do. I'm going to put, these corners aren't dark enough yet because they keep picking up the white off the, um, off the actual easel where I've gone over. So there you go, that's a bit better, a little bit darker now. Because the darker your corners are, the more the eye of the person is drawn into the actual picture into whatever your focal point is. Now I'm also carrying this on. I'm actually putting in some clouds using the big brush, which you can use. You know, I usually use a, um, a fan brush, but today, so topsy-turvy day, big birthday, no idea what I'm doing, so we'll just go with it and see what happens. Okay, so there we are. I think what I will do is I will wash my brush and I wash it in odourless paint thinners. Now, I did run out of the Bob Ross ones and I went into the range and Windsor & Newton also do an odourless one and it is odourless because believe me, with my sinuses I would know if it's not odourless. Claire Harker, hi! Um, so yeah, we know it's odourless paint, oh, paint thinner. Right, so here we go, brush that in a little bit, go into the white. Should we add a little bit of mix into the clouds, a little bit of shape. I'm just tapping them in where the dark bits are, so that we've got a little bit of maybe light. It's all a bit swirly, maybe use the corner. Swivel them all in, see what happens. Okay, here we go. And as I get told by loads of my old students, yes, I do say okay an awful lot, so I'm sorry, but okay. Okay, there we go. <laughs> right, I'm, I'm actually going to add a little bit over here because. There's nothing quite like the black and the white of a little cloud. So we'll put that over there and we'll put that one. I'm going to make this one a little bit bigger. Literally just tapping in the corner edge. I'm just using my brush. Okay, there we go. Now, we'll use the other end of the brush. I'll just wipe it off on the floor, which means I'm going to end up with paint on my feet, but there we go. I have actually got a towel down there. I'm not actually wiping it straight on the floor. Although when we did carpet the hut originally, we went into the carpet shop and we basically said we want the cheapest carpet going and they were trying to sell us all sorts of carpets. We saw this bit that was an off cut and it was the right size from a hut. And, and I just said to them, I said, I, said I, I seriously, I'm gonna just get paint all over it. I just want cheap and cheerful. I just don't want floorboards because they're expensive to replace once they're covered. Okay, I'm going to put a little bit of dark in here because I think it's got a little bit too. I have a little, with a little bit of a white underneath it. So there we go, and then we'll come back, mix up, fluff it up, set it into the painting. There we are. And the beauty of this way is that if you do get any extra streaks of paint it really doesn't matter because they just brush in for some reason that cloud isn't there we are okay so that's all I'm basically going to do for my sky should I do a mountain what do you reckon shall I just do some rolling hills what I will do first is get rid of that because they're real hair brushes they do shed quite badly should I do some rolling hills? I did a mountain last week, didn't I? So let's just try some rolling hills. We'll do rolling hills today. So again, two inch brush. Now I'm going to mix with, with, put white on it first, and then I'm going to go straight into this mixture of all sorts of colors I've got here. Because the mountain or the hills, as we say, is all going to be in the distance. So I'm just mixing up all the colours together, all the blacks. So if something's farther away, it's going to be lighter. So we'll put 
this mountain or this hillside just in the back we'll raise it up and we'll shoot it up that cut that side like that okay and all I'm doing is tapping just slowly tapping and there we are and basically you have a hillside clean dry brush make sure it is dry and just tap along the bottom there we go just sets it back into the painting so then we come back grab a little bit more of the dark colors because we're now going coming forward so we need to change in tone um, going to come down here going to bring it up it's going to come up and over hill there and come back down this way there we go okay there we are there that looks all right again take your dry brush and just tap all you're doing like I say is just literally setting it down into the painting And then we have it. Next one, take a little bit more. This time I'm going to come from over here and I'm actually going to come down in front here like that and then I think I'm going to need a little bit more, especially of the black. I may need to go back for that. There we go. A little bit more up and then I'm going to bring it back into water. And in fact, I think, there we go. I think what I'm going to do before I go any further, so this is what I mean, this is, uh, I do love this method because you just change your mind as you go along. Okay, little bit of liquid white, cut across, and we're just gonna make this look like this is the waters in the distance okay there we are there we are there's the lake and because you can see a little bit of this here we'll even put a little bit of the lake in the background and there we are that easy all right lake post <laughs> see birthday card it seriously is my birthday today right so going to Put a little bit of shadow in, so we'll bring that down into the water, and then you go straight across, and ta-da! You have reflections. Get my knife again. I'm going to mix a little bit of grey in with that. Then cut across. That's a little cove. We've got a little bit of a cove. All right, little spit of land there with a little bit of a cove. Perhaps we've got some ducks and stuff living there. Okay, now I'm going to come across. So we really need some really dark colours. So I'm going to bring in all the blacks. And then I'm going to come. Where should I come? Should I come there? Yep, not too late now. We're there. Smack it in. This is why you have a very sturdy um, easel. Just open the bristles, tap it, open the bristles. Okay. Now I'm not going to come right across, leave a little bit, but I am. Whoa, let's have a big tray. There we are. One big tree and we'll have another little tree there okay so seriously all you're thinking of is shape okay at the moment I will go over that I'm not going to go for another tree there okay there we are okay 
So now I need my script liner brush. Got anybody else? Ems! Hello there! Happy birthday! Thank you! Of course I'm having a great day. I'm with everybody. Everybody here on Facebook. <laughs> Wonderful. And perhaps later on on YouTube as well, because as you guys know, I do record this um, on my separate camera head here, and that goes to my YouTube family. So if I bring that up, a little bit darker, bring that up. Now the reason I want this a fairly simple Oh, it's because obviously the flowers are then going to be growing up from here and I'm going to want them to pop. I want them to be the important bit more than anything else. Okay, there we are. A little bit more. We'll go up here. Perhaps this bush has got some. A little bit more up here. There we go. A few bits come out. You know what it's like at the water's edge. There's all sorts of things that grows in the water's edge. I don't even know if these particular flowers that I'm going to do grow in the water's edge, but they are today. Because do you know what? It's my world. And they'll do what I want it to do. Okay, so there we go. So there's your few flowers. Now these are the ones that I will be putting the flowers on, the flower stems on. So I'm going to need a few that actually come up from the painting, from in front of the paint. They're actually in front of you. So it's one, two, rule of threes. And we'll have another one there. Now I need leaves. So I will need my flat brush, which isn't there. Oh no, it is. I lied. Again, we'll go into the darker. I hate when that happens. When you drop your brush into the paint because then you get covered in it. Okay. So, again, I'll have some leaves coming up. Darker colour. There we are. I don't know if you can hear some noises in the background. It's my neighbours. Um, now, I am going to use, not use that yet. Okay, I'm going to actually go into white with a little bit of the grey to highlight. Okay, so just needs to be lighter than what you've got on there and then think of the shape of your tree there we go because I don't want it looking like it's snowing on there I don't want snow but obviously you have to show that you've got some different depths Actually, going to go darker on that one. There's a little dark bush. I'm running out of black now. So I need some more black. So we'll have a nice light, light one there. So let me just quickly grab the black. And I had opened it earlier. If you struggle like me with um, I have arthritis, so I really struggle opening some of these tubes. I found a wonderful weapon to have in my arsenal. They are called nutcrackers. And they go around pretty much, I think this is about to pause because the battery's going orange. Um, they go around pretty much any paint, tube of paint going. And they're wonderful. And if they don't open it, then you're in trouble or you go and get your husband. Martina Karlinka, hello there. Okay, there we go. That's what I wanted, a little bit more dark. I'm going to add a little bit of paint thinner as well. So I 
just all I did was dip my brush into the paint thinner. There we are. And now we've got a dark bush instead of just all different shades of white, no, shades of grey. But that's already been copyrighted. Okay, bit of a pyramid there. Let's have a bright sparkler over here, shall we? There we are. It's that tree. We'll have that one coming down. We'll go in the corner. And we'll have some in here. There we are. Now I do find it a little bit difficult because like I say the canvas board goes flush to the back of the canvas, the uh, easel rather. And just a little bit to set those down on the painters. Okay, so basically that's all I'm going to do for that. I'm going to get, I'm going to go over here actually and get my pot of brushes. I'm um, going to use this one, which is number 12. So it's number 12 flat. Now, I said I was going to do some colours, but first, I'm going to get my scruffy brush, which again is a Donna Juby brush. I've told you about them before. They are meant for acrylic, but I use them for um, oils. Because I, I, really, as long as you look after them, and let's be honest, oils are just acrylics that dry slower. Okay, so I'm going to put a bit of a cone. You know those cone flowers that you get? I, I thought they were called Rudebecki, but I'm not entirely sure now. Now that I'm saying it, if there's any botanists out there, let me know. Um, because although I'm going to do, there we go, I'm going to do the, I'm just tapping the top in there just for those of you who can see. And then I'm going to add a bright colour. Now usually they're sort of orangey colour. And I say I don't actually know, I mean it could be somebody's garden I suppose, that's maybe why they're here. They've seeded themselves from someone's garden maybe. We're doing time wise, oh, we're okay. We're okay. We've got plenty of time. I'll have another one up here. Now. I mean, the sun's come out for these little flowers. There we go. Oh, and I'm going to do I know it's a leaf, but I'm going to do another little one just there. He's maybe in the distance a bit. There we go. Okay, so that's my scruffy brush. Like I say, you can bake your own scruffy brushes if you take a brush like that and then just snip it a little bit above there and then dry it leaning down on something that's really all it is okay a little bit of alizarin crimson and the yellow because i want an orange sort of a goldeny browny orangey sort of thing i'm going to what color will that be i'll go a little bit i want a little bit brighter a little bit of that in maybe there we go that's the sort of color i don't want to mix it too well because what you do then is you have the flowers coming up, the leaves, coming into the centre. Okay, and then with the scruffy brush that I said you didn't need anymore, which you do really, go back. The black cone over the top. Okay, now in truth, that flat brush I'm using isn't really the best shape. I need to try and find a different one. Um, let me try this one. That may be a better shape. That's a, oh, it's a number 10. Looks like a round brush. Okay, so let's try this one. There we go. Again. I don't think anybody's watching me. Have that. 
little bit more yellow. Make these a little bit brighter. That's the that's the shape I wanted. So that's a better one. I'm sure you've seen all these flowers before. I'm going to go back over this and reshape these because they don't have the proper shape. There we go. There we are. Okay. Who else is watching? Go. A few little, a few little ones on that one. Brighten them up a little bit because they're in the front. A little bit darker. Lightened it up too much. A little bit yellow. make it a little bit more yellow. In fact I'm going to wipe the brush off and get back to my true colour which is a lot brighter. There we are. Do half a leaf sticking out the back there. And this one I'm just going to touch the brush because he's nearly dead. Okay. And I think with that, I'm going to get my red. Oh, someone's watching. That's good. I'm going to sign in the corner. And yeah, I'm still signing in red because I sign all my paintings in red. Regardless of their colour thing. And there we have it. So, I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to go off and enjoy my birthday now. <laughs> Thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget, if you have any um, commissions, you can get in touch with me, rbart.co.uk. Um, I say this will be on the website the stores there the lessons are there don't forget the virtual lessons if you'd like to learn to paint hopefully with the lockdown easing we'll soon be able to do face-to-face -face lessons again so we can get that those back up and running again and um, in the meantime stay safe have fun enjoy your day i certainly will enjoy mine thank you for your company see you soon see you next week 11 o'clock bye